Um, moving on to another email that I got that, that's moving in us again towards defining this notion of a emotionally mm-hmm. healthy family. And, and now we're going to be addressing this idea of values and beliefs. And, mm-hmm. and here we go. The question is, I've heard many people talk about family values. And that term confuses me. I'm a big believer in fairness and mm-hmm. being a law abiding citizen. Yet when I think of my family and my position as father, I really don't see any difference between rules and values. Could you give me some ideas on that one? And, and that's a good one. I hear yeah, that one a lot. I do too. Rules are how life regulates you from the outside. Values are how you regulate yourself from the inside. Right. Does that make sense to you? Makes sense to me. I mean, if it, it, and, and, you know, I don't mean to be uh, metaphorical. I don't mean to be, to, to, to make fun of this, but you know, if you have a sign in a business in a shopping area that mm-hmm. says shoplifters will be prosecuted to the full extent of the law. And there's a sign and there's mm-hmm. cameras everywhere. Okay. okay. That's a rule. Yeah, it right? is. Rule is you Somebody shoplift. I'm going to see yeah. you. You're going to get arrested. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. But if internal to yourself, you have a belief system and that belief says that I don't steal. I don't steal. That's my value. It's not a rule. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the value is if you, it, you might interpret it this way, a rule is, I don't steal. A value is I don't own what I didn't earn. Sure. That would be a value. I tend to want to do values and positive statements too. Yeah. (coughs) Some people give me this one. The golden rule. Do you treat others the way you want to be treated? Okay. It's actually a value. I would say that's true. Yeah. Do treat others the way you want to be treated. Yeah. And so if I do that, then, you know, if you hit me and my value is treat others the way I want to be treated, you should expect that I wouldn't hit you back. Because I didn't want to be hit in the first place. So, so that idea that you have a system that you yeah. are governed by that's internal to yourself, mm-hmm. that you don't need it on the outside. You're not worried about that you're going to break the law, mm-hmm. that somebody's going to arrest you, you're going to right. get a penalty. Then, and then you, the you'll value it, system is in place. You'll live it when nobody's looking. Sure. Sure. that's what values are about. You know, we, I have an interesting story to tell you because uh, I had to work through this, but I found a wallet outside my office. This is years and years ago when Carrie and I were going to school I and this. I was, uh, we were, sli- our house was broken into at the time. We're both students <sighs> and there was nothing to steal. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's a credit, but that's a true story. There was nothing to steal. They didn't steal anything nope. because we didn't have anything to steal. Mm-hmm. But, um, we found, I found this wallet outside my office and at the time, um, you know, there was $800 in it and, and there was this person's driver's license and all this identification. Mm-hmm. And I saw I this, this and, and I, you know, I, you know, I, I just, I don't want this. And as it turns out, he, his office, according to the card that was in there was right upstairs. And I went up there and gave him his wallet and he's looking at me sort of with this, you know, this, dumbfounded look at the money how did you was get still my in the wallet? wallet. Yeah. And the truth is that his wife had driven him to work to drop him off. Uh-huh. They needed a dollar for the toll. He had opened his wallet given her dollar, dollar, put the wallet in his lap. Mm. So when she dropped him off, he scurried inside and left the wallet on the ground, dropped oh, on the ground, yeah. didn't notice it. Mm-hmm. And he wanted to give me a reward. And I, I just, I didn't want a reward. I wanted nothing to do with this money. It was right. just such a temptation. And he really didn't understand that because if you will, I, I, it wasn't mine. It wasn't right. mine. I wanted nothing to do with it. Just get this wallet away from you. Yeah. And, and that would be an example of, of a value system. And that's one of those times that I, I can give you that, if you will, as it relates to something that really happened in my life. Yeah. So there you go. R- values are how you regulate yourself from the inside. Rules are how life m- regulates you from the outside. Okay. Mm-hmm. Carrie's going to go to our next question. Well, it's time for our points to ponder. Ooh, point to ponder. Mm-hmm. Here we go. So our, our point to ponder tonight is... A relationship never gets any better than the problem it doesn't solve. Man, think about that, huh? That's that's heavy. I have I have lots of people that will tell me they don't just talk about it. We're not going to talk about it. <laughs> See, and when they tell you, well, I'm not going to talk about it. The implication is, hey, everything's fine. We're not arguing. We're not fighting. Right. But nothing's being resolved. No. So we're just not talking about it. Now add that to the well, the pop the straw that broke the camel's back. Oh, yeah. Sure. I mean, if you've accumulated things that we don't talk Mm -hmm. about after a while, I mean, you run out of things that you can Mm -hmm. even discuss without touching something that you haven't mentioned before. And the straw that broke the camel's back is not the problem. It's the accumulation of negative energies, the accumulation of those problems that we don't solve, can't solve, can't put away that accumulate to such a point that finally we're just we're submerged in all these negative energies. I don't have I am. I'm done. 
I'm done. And it's going to come out. It's all going to come out, though, is what happens when the straw breaks the camel's back. Yeah. The, the, the pattern of not solving problems is the real issue. Because mm-hmm. every time you solve some issue, some problem between you and your partner, then you're increasingly increasing your ability to collaborate, co-labor, yeah. work with my partner to for the betterment of us figuring out some common ground. Right. But understand, not talking about it isn't practicing to problem solve. And things are going to get worse. They're not going to get better. Right. They're going to get, they're going to get worse. They're not going to get better because my scorecard is going to get bigger. Yeah. My scorecard. And which is all the stuff, and, which are all the straws essentially on the back, camel's back, all the stuff I hold against you and keep inside. Sure. And I know she's so mad at me that I can't mm-hmm. discuss it and because I can't discuss it. Then, you know, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm. So I like that. That was a point to ponder for today. Yes, that was it. Um, you're going to go on to question number five. 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 Yeah, I've got it right here. Um, this one says, I married my high school sweetheart who is also, who it was also a cheerleader. She's a social butterfly. I love her energy and her zest for life. And I admit she's a bit overwhelming. However, Facebook, Twitter, and text messaging dominate her time while we're together. She's a hundred percent committed to texting, talking on her <laughs> cell phone. I've come to realize that although we're together, I'm spending more and more time alone as I'm not involved with anything that she's doing while we share the same space. Do you have any suggestions that might help me through this to get through to her? Okay. You know, I like where, she, where he said, uh, texting, talking, what was, the, what were the three things that you used? Before? Twitter, which is another f- social networking thing, uh-huh. uh, Facebook and texting, texting, and then talking on her cell phone. We, we had a babysitter that was taking care of our children one time and, and I had to stop her and say, you know, you've got to get rid of this phone because she's so busy texting that she is totally oblivious to where the kids are. Right. And, and, you know, she'd put the phone down and it makes a sound whenever a new thing, whenever on, a new, on the counter. Go, bring, and that would be something else arrived. And, and that little phone sitting over there going, bring, and about two minutes later, go, bring, <laughs> and, and she just looked like Drove she was starting to vibrate yeah. in place because I wouldn't let her go see what, what the hell was on the dang phone. And mm-hmm. I mean, you can hear, bring, and, and I would dare say she probably had 40 text messages and it would have taken at least an hour to read all stuff. And it would kept going, bring, <laughs> Bring. Yeah. So I, I also see this as I drive around. You'll see people on their cell phone. On their cell phone, yeah. Um, texting. Yeah. I see people doing that, texting. Uh, but the, the idea that... You're not alone, man. When you are together, that time should be to be together and not to be sharing on email and text messaging and that mm-hmm. kind of stuff. So we would say that they're, they're not really spending time together that's mm-hmm. with them as a couple. They're just sort of walking the walk but they're not really together as a couple and exercising right. themselves right. towards this notion so, of a relationship. Yeah. So what's really going on is if we look at our, the ways that we look at characteristics is that she's, we have a boundary violation. Yeah. A big boundary violation. We'll, talk we'll come about back that to it when, when we come, come back, back from the break. And uh, I'm Dr. Play. And I'm Carrie Play. We will see you in a few. We're going to finish up our question here that was about the lady that was texting and twittering and and Mm -hmm. doing all these activities with her boyfriend slash husband. And uh, one last comment about that from Carrie. Well, in my mind, her cell phone is invading their relationship. Sure. When we talk about boundaries, you know, boundaries are a way, again, that you set limits so that you have the ability to have uh, physical, emotional, and perceptual space from those around you. Sure. And with the phone in the car or wherever and always taking that as the priority, you were violating the emotional space of the relationship. Um, her partner is commenting about my, my space is being violated. That's perceptual sure. violation of space. And so she, in my mind, he may have to talk to her and about, you know, when we're together, can we agree to, to turn the phones off? He probably he may have one too that's just not violating. I, I can't help but remind you about last week's show when we talked about defining conflict, mm-hmm. and we define conflict as a difference between two people that are attempting to share the same emotional, physical, and In perceptual space. space right. Okay, and so his perception that we go on a date that I'm here to share my time with you, uh-huh. and that we're going to do something together that we are going to enjoy, and as we do this together to enjoy this thing. That is, uh, for uh, for him at least, entertainment, mm-hmm. going out to dinner. But the fact that she is so disconnected from him yeah. to the point that she's involved with other parties. I mean, when you think about it, conceptually, he is on a date with her, <laughs> but she's on a date with him and her and him and her and him and her. <laughs> and so it's a group outing. Yeah. You know? Ooh. 
And, and, and that idea that... He didn't know it was a party. Yeah, so perceptually, you know, it's not... She, he perceives it as being about us, and she perceives it about, no, no, I'm here physically with you, but I have all these other dialogues that I need to maintain and continue mm-hmm. while I'm with you, and therefore, mm-hmm. um, don't complain about it. Yeah. So I would say, by definition, there is a conflict going on, and I would say that he is, she is violating his privacy by bringing all these other people into their relationship at a time when they should be with into each other. Their, yeah, into their private time. Okay. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I guess I got the 